Daniel 11 from verse 35 to 38. And we read the word of the Lord in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And some of them of understa understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and, and to make them, Daniel 11, verse 35, 35, to try them and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed amen and the king shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that that is determined shall be done neither shall he regard the god of his fathers nor the desire of women nor regard any god for he shall magnify himself above all let me repeat, he shall, he, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, amen, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all, but in his state shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things amen have your seat please the title of this message is a question will the empty christ be homosexual is the question amen praise the lord um Glory to his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bible says, Amen, that the empty Christ will come to this earth. Bible speaks about the empty Christ as someone who is opposed to Christ or against Christ book of John says that there are many antichrist now and he was referring to the Gnostics who were opposing to the doc Christian doctrine that God incarnated in a man amen and God, God took the form of flesh and that's why he says Apostle John, many antichrists are. Amen. But, according to the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation and even Jesus Christ himself, he spoke about the coming of the antichrist. Amen. And many things have been taught or said about him. One of these is that the antichrist will be homosexual and there are some people support that version in the book of Daniel 11 verse 37 as we have read neither shall he regard the God of his fathers and they say that he will be homosexual because of this statement nor the desire of women they interpret this text saying that the empty Christ will not regard the love of women that in other words he will not like women and on the contrary we like men amen and that's why they support that, that teaching saying that the empty Christ will be homosexual a gay because of it amen that he will not regard 
or will not, uh, will not pay attention to the love of women. Praise the Lord. Amen. We know that the Antichrist, according to the prophecy, will support homosexuality because Jesus spoke that in his return to the earth, the days of his return will be like the days of Lot, according to Luke 17, 28 to 30. Verse before, some couple of verses before, he says, as the days of Noah. And then he said in Luke 17, 28 to 30, as the days of Lot. Amen. They were drinking, eating, selling, buying, building. Amen. But Bible says that it was a reference to Genesis 19. That Bible describes the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah which was against nature. It means homosexuality. Praise the Lord. Amen. And if by the days of the coming of Jesus Christ will be and is as we see today the news as we see today around the world how lesbians and gays are claiming for their rights and in america as we know that the actual president said publicly that he will support marriage gay marriage amen Praise the Lord. It is part of the fulfillment of the word of God. Also in, in, in France, they, they support that. Many countries, for example, my country, Colombia, some senators are striving for the approval of, of the legal rights of homosexual, homosexuality. Amen? I don't understand that because... What is the goal of that? They are living together, men with men, women with women. What do they want? Amen? Praise God. I know that it is an offense to the holiness of God because the Bible says that God is present in every marriage no matter what kind of religion is performing those uh, the ceremonies and I know that it, it is an offense of Satan because when a minister delegated by God no matter if he is regenerated or not Bible said the, the, the authorities delegated in the world are appointed by God amen so any civilian authority when he comes to marry some couples God is present, according to Romans chapter 13. So it is an offense before God. Amen? Because Bible says that God established that man will leave his house and will join to his wife. Amen? And that's why Bible said they will be just one. And Bible says also that at the beginning God created male and female. It is an offense before God that a couple compound by two persons of the same gender come before the civilian or religious authority, right, to get married. Amen? Because Satan knows that God has to be present. But of course, God is not present because he does not approve it. Can you praise the name of Jesus? But Jesus said that by his coming, homosexuality will be or is in the world. Amen? I agree with that. But, Supporting that the empty Christ will be homosexual? Mm, I disagree. You know why? Because 
I cannot support a doctrine just with an isolated verse of the Bible. In fact, it is not a complete verse of the Bible. It's a part of the verse of the Bible. It is just one statement. And it is dependent statement. It's not independent. That it depends on the context of the same verse of the Bible. Amen? When grammar we say depend independent clause clause amen and it is not independent it is dependent amen i'm going to show you can you praise the name of the lord hallelujah praise god okay in exegesis we learn that we have to take in consideration of the lexical background which is to deal with grammar to deal with words and also in hermeneutics we have to deal with the historical background which means what in what circumstance the author wrote this part of the of the text and what he meant amen praise god amen we are going to work with that in order to get a right interpretation. Hallelujah. Chapter 11 is a connection of chapter 10 and chapter 12. Chapter 10, Bible says that Daniel was fasting. And also it is a connection, chapter 9. <laughs> because chapter 9, he, Daniel was searching in the books concerning the time appointed for the discipline of Israel. And he discovered by the books of written concerning the letters and writings of Jeremiah that it was prophesied that the exile of Israel was appointed for 70 years. And he realized that the 70 years took place in his days. He said, now is the time to, to, come, to go back to our land. And he repented and he asked mercy God in chapter 9. Bible says that he was praying and an angel came, Gabriel, and gave him understanding of the issue and revealed to them the 70 weeks appointed for Israel. Amen. And chapter 10, Bible says that he was praying for understanding the message of Gabriel and chapter 10 Bible says that he proposed in his heart to be 21 year, uh, 21 days of fasting he was praying and fasting during three full weeks Bible says you see that the revelation of Daniel came by praying by being consecrated to, and it happened not at the same time it is separated from some years just read chapter 9 verse 1 and just read chapter 10 verse 1 and you will identify the difference in years it give us a great lesson for us amen that the revelations that people are receiving today visions and prophecies Every day, every week, there are some churches that there are some people who are appointed by the bishop or apostle as a prophet. And they invite people to come to church because the prophets are willing to prophesy the new ones and people. And they pay more attention what they say rather what the Bible say. Amen. But the prophecies that came to the men of God were not every week. Neither every month. They were separated for gaps of years. And in consecration. 21 days of fasting. You see the point? 
fasting not as many Christians today say. We have fasted 40 days. And they are eating noodles, rice. They are eating fries, chamein. Amen? But nothing of meat. Because that is the fasting. They offend God. The fasting that we see in the Bible is that Daniel said, left his work for a while. And he went with some friends by the river, Bible says, Heidekel. In that river, he was not upset, not maybe in a, in, a, in a house close to the beach, but praying, praying, praying. How many hours did they have? Us. 24 hours. When he was working, he used to pray three times per day. One in the morning, the other, the mid day, and the last one in the night. Amen? Three times per day. I don't know how long was every time. Least time could be one hour. It means three hours daily. If it were so. Amen. Can you imagine Daniel with his free time to be with the Lord? Do you think that he was going to pray ten minutes? In a day? Or three hours in a day? If he used to pray three hours when he was totally busy with the business of the government of Babylon. Can you imagine in 21 days of fasting? How many hours daily? I leave you it into your mind. You see the point? Amen? The actual prophets, how many hours they pray? And Bible says that he was praying and he fainted, an angel came. And Bible says that he saw the Son of Man, according to Revelation chapter 1, speaking about the divinity of Jesus. And then Gabriel came as well and gave him understanding concerning a vision. And Bible says, chapter 10, verse 18. Excuse me, 18 north. Fourteen. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people, Israel, in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. Amen. Can you praise the, the name of Jesus? And verse 21 says, But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. Amen. And the angel revealed to Daniel what was going to happen. Daniel wrote this vision later. Amen. And chapter 11, verse let me show you something important. This prophecy is concerning Israel. In the near future for them and in the latter days for us. Amen? And Bible says that it was for, it was for the end of time. Chapter 11, verse 35 says, And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to push and to make them white even to the time of the end. Notice, to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. Amen. Verse 40 says, And at the time of the end, you see the, the point? Amen. And chapter 12, 
Verse 4, Bible says, But thou, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Amen. And verse 9 says, And said, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Amen. In scatology, scatology we have a rule that is the interpretation of double reference reference that takes place in the near future and then it will take place as well in the in the future amen and it is speaking about chapter 11 verse 36 and the king shall do according to his will it is speaking about someone amen Someone in the near future of Daniel and someone in the last days. Double reference. Amen. This king, because Daniel received a revelation concerning the kings that were going to rule the earth. Daniel 7 says, four kings will rule the earth. One was from Babylon. The other one was from, from Medes and Persia. And the third one was, from, Gre from, was Greek, uh, from Greece. And the fourth one was from Rome. Which is the last one king that is going to come. Can you praise the name of Jesus? Chapter 8 of Daniel speaks about a vision. And that vision is that he saw... A ram. This ram had two horns. And it represented the kingdoms of Medes and Persia. And then a goat. He goat came and, how does the Bible says, and hurt the ram. And this goat had a, big, a bigger and great horn. And Bible says after beating it, that horn was split in four horns. Horns and Bible said that this ram, first of all, was the Medians and Persia, and the he goat was Greece with a great horn. It was Alexander the Great, and it was divided in four horns. These four horns were the kingdom was split in four parts. Every general, he had four generals, took a part of the kingdom of Greece. Amen? Can you praise the Lord? And in the part that belonged to Syria and Israel by the east, Amen? Came out this king, Antiochus Epiphanes. Amen? Can you praise the name of Jesus? Greece conquered. By the time of Daniel, it was 539 to 330 was the kingdom of Med, 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 Medos and Persia, right? And by that time was living Daniel, 539, because he was in the, how to say, the connection of those those two kingdoms, Babylon and Medes and Persia, right? And then Greece came 330 to 63 before Christ. Amen. In that time is the appearance of this king called Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus Epiphanes. Amen. He was a king of Syria. The last king of Persia, but of course, belonged to the kingdom of Greece. Are you getting the point or are you confused? I try to make you understand the, to understand that. Amen. History says that he was, he was trying to defeat the Bible says, in chapter 11 says that the king of the north, it means 
Antiochus Epiphanes went to fight with the king of the south, it means the king of Egypt. But as he was not able to defeat them, right? He, it is according to history. He went back to his land. But he needed to have a report of victory. And he came to Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, there was a revolt in Jerusalem. Because the governor appointed by this king, Amen, was defeated for some guerrillas. Amen. So this guy Antiochus came to Jerusalem and killed plenty of people. It was by the years 150 something. Amen. And then this Antiochus Epiphanes came to Jerusalem and entered into the temple of God that was rebuilt by Nehemiah and Ezra and he put an abomination inside of the Holy of Holies. He sacrificed a, a pig, amen, and established a God inside of that place. It was prophesied by Daniel about the desolate abomination. Amen? And also, it was prophesied by Jesus for the end of the world. Amen? So, chapter 11 of Daniel, verse 36, is speaking about Antiochus Epiphanes. Amen? Who reigned from one... 60, uh, let me say, let me say to you the date because it is very important, right? 197 before Christ and died 187 before Christ. But I got another information in Wikipedia, Wikipedia, and it says that he ruled the Jews from 175 to 164 before Christ. Amen. So there are two dates, but you confirm. In history, we don't know something sure, right? Amen. Can you praise the name of Jesus? And one characteristic of this king is written in verse 36. And is describing as well a prophecy for the latter days, the end as Daniel says, concerning the empty Christ, and the king shall do according to his will. Amen? The king shall do according to his will. Praise God. Amen? The king shall do according to his will. Amen? Amen? That's why I'm saying to you, this one didn't consult anyone when he came to Jerusalem to attack Jerusalem. Because he used to do according to his own will. Amen. And Bible says that he will do according to his will by doing what? Let's read the next or following verses. Of the following sentences. And he shall exalt himself. Amen. And magnify himself above every God. And shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. When Bible said that he will do. Amen. He shall do according to his will. Is addressing that statement concerning religious Worship. You understand? Religious worship. He will do according to his will and then because he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till 
indignation be accomplished for he that is determined shall be done when bible says that he shall do according to his will is connecting that will with religious worship amen that he will not exalt any god around him amen can you praise the name of jesus According to history, Antiochus Epiphanes was of Syrian nationality, but he went to study outside of his nation and he involved in the culture of Greece culture and Roman culture, right? And he, while he was abroad, he learned to worship other gods and he despised the gods of his own land in such a way that he wanted to establish the religion of the Greece in Syria but he could not amen are you following the point amen that is one characteristic of the Antichrist Amen. According to history, Antiochus Epiphanes didn't study or prepared himself in his own land, Syria. But he went outside and he changed his own religion, the religions of his fathers and parents. Wow, I got this information in history. You may find it in the complete pulpit commentary of the Bible volumes of books you may find that amen it says anti antiochus is looked upon not as a man of macedonian or greek descendant descent but as a syrian as certainly he had no reverence for the ancient gods of syria his opposition to the theocracy and to the worship of jehovah was but a portion of white policy the object of which was the abolition of all local cults wow <laughs> praise god amen it is also one characteristic of the antichrist in the near future amen that he will not respect amen the god of his nation and the God of his fathers because Bible says clearly that he shall exalt himself what the Bible says and the king, and the king shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself it is not speaking about politics or fin finances of course he will do according to his will but this connection is doing is according to religious view or worship he will do according to his will by exalting himself amen apostle paul spoke about that second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4 the man of sin who opposeth to God in such a way that he will sit in the temple of God in Jerusalem assuming that he is God amen he will do according to his will because he will exalt himself Antiochus came to Jerusalem and he forbade to the worship of Jehovah as he knew when he was were fighting in Egypt that there, there was a revolt in Jerusalem he went to Jerusalem to kill Jews and to set his own God in the temple and sacrifice that animal he 
exalt himself as God. As the prophecy speaks about the empty Christ. The empty Christ will exalt himself. Amen. And magnify himself above every God. Amen. And shall speak when he speaks something or he spoke something about the God of the Israelites, he spoke blasphemies. Daniel chapter 7, chapter 11, verse what we are dealing, verse 36. And shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. It means the God of heaven. Daniel 7 verse 5, verse 25 speaks about the small horn, which is the Antichrist, that he will do the same. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, against God. Amen. It's one characteristic of the empty Christ that he will exalt himself. And he if he will speak something about God is to blaspheme him. Amen. He will do his own will by exalting himself. Amen. And magnifying himself. Magnifying himself. His eye will be alive. Amen? You see the point? His eye will be alive. It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. Nothing else. No one else. Amen? Can you praise the name of Jesus? On the contrary to Jesus Christ. Bible says that Jesus Christ came not to do his own will, but the will of the Father. Amen? This man comes out. Antiochus Epiphanes came to do his will. Right? And to exalt himself above every God. Amen? And magnify himself. Can you praise the name of Jesus? But Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 5, verse 30. I can of my own self do nothing, as I hear a judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. I can of my own self do nothing. In other words, everything that Jesus did on the earth was according to the perfect will of God. We can say everything. The way how he ate. The way how he laughed. The way how he entertained. The way how he dressed. The way how he worshipped God. The way how he served the Lord. He says, I can of my own self do nothing. Are we doing according to the perfect will of God? The things that Jesus did? Or we are doing according to our own self? Antichrist means against Christ. Amen? Amen? Are we behaving against him by doing according to my own will as the empty Christ? By exalting himself? By exalting myself? By magnifying myself? Can you praise the name of Jesus? Christians must or ought to exalt him ought to glorify and magnify him in everything 
That is the application of this lesson for us. The empty Christ will do according to his will because he will exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. The actual Christianity are not exalting him, not magnifying him, but they are exalting themselves, magnifying themselves. Just watch the TV to see TV, TV evangelists or preachers in TV. They glorify themselves. Amen. The purpose of this book was intended to glorify Jesus. To exalt Jesus. But if you have brain and analyze the messages preached in many pulpits around the world today, they are not exalting Jesus, magnifying Jesus, but they are exalting themselves. Humanism. And presenting God as a servant. This actual gospel has reduced the great and most high in a simple, in the same level, in the same stature of a man. In such a way that we become lords and he, God, is become as my servant. Amen. Can you praise the name of Jesus? John the Baptist says, It is necessary that he must decrease, and I decrease. He must increase, and I decrease. Amen. Just hear a message if that pastor is showing and exalting and glorifying Jesus and his sacrifice. I heard a preacher say it. Read Revelation 22. The last state of the, crea the new creation which is eternity. And you may find seven times the word Lamb of God. It means, he says, that after everything passed away, passed away in eternity, seven times in Revelation 22, is repeat the word Lamb of God. Why? Because in eternity we will never forget the sacrifice of Jesus who brought redemption not only for human beings but for all the creation. That is the purpose of this book. To reveal who, is he, who he is. To exalt him. To glorify him. You see the character of Antiochus Epiphanes? He will do his own, according to his own will because he exalts himself, he magnifies himself above every God. It is what the actual Christianity is doing. It is the deceit of Satan that he said to Eve, you will be like God. Knowing the good and evil. Amen. And many pastors, many preachers, they think and they confess that they are gods. Amen. Can you praise the name of Jesus? Oh, we worship him. We worship him. Chapter 6 of John, verse 38. Jesus says, For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent, that sent me. True Christians on this earth are set to do the will of the Father. The will of Jesus. 
not our own will. Amen? And you can make the difference between a true and a false Christian, between the profane and saint, how in the way just you see them, how they are dressing. In that way, you will realize that that person is denying himself, is crucifying himself, is dying for himself, is allowing him to be glorified in their spirits and their bodies. But when we do according to our own will, we leave free course to our corrupted mind, our corrupted heart, which is deceitful and wicked to lead us in how we speak, how we talk, how we entertain, how we dress, how we worship and serve the Lord. Can you praise the name of Jesus? You see how we learn from this verse of the Bible? Amen? Glory to his name. Barnes commentary says, As Antiochus, Antiochus had been educated abroad and has passed his early life in foreign countries, he had never paid much respect to the religion of his own land. Amen? So, that's why the writer says, He shall do according to his will, because he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. In fact, the indignation of God came upon him because he died not in battle, just with an infirmity. Amen? For that is determined shall be done. And the Bible said the Antichrist will die not in battle. Amen? Will die not with any disease. God himself will command some angels to take the empty Christ and false prophet to take them alive and to cast them I don't know how it will be done first time in history that someone will come out from this world to go to anywhere of the space or universe where the lake of fire is but the Bible says that he will be arrested by one angel and the angel will cast him into the lake of fire. The Bible says that. Amen. The first human being going out of this planet earth without space, suit space, or a space suit. Can you imagine? If Bible says, I believe. Amen. Can you praise the, Lord, the name of Jesus? He will do, the king shall do according to his will, because he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. And verse 37 says, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. The God of his own land, the God of his fathers. He will not regard. One characteristic of the Antichrist will be the same thing. Amen? As Antiochus. Someone who was or will be educated abroad and he will not regard the God of his parents. Bible says that. Amen? Can you praise the name of Jesus? He shall not regard the God of his fathers. The Greek version says gods. Hebrew version says God of his fathers. Gods of fathers or God of the father. Any deity. 
He ate it, right? Amen? And we go to the sentence, nor the desire of women. Notice what the author is saying right here is that he will do according to his will. According to religious worship. Right? And verse 37 says that he shall regard no, the, he shall, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers nor the desire of women. Amen? That word desire of women, this, the desire, if the word says women desire, that word desire, amen, were an adjective, but it is as a noun, the desire, it is a noun. And this word in Hebrew is coming from Kemda or Chemda, Chemda or Kemda, C-H-E-M-D-A-H, Chemda or Kemda. That is in Hebrew a noun feminine and it corresponds not a sexual desire but a religious, uh, uh, how to say, um, a desire for any god or deity, de deity. And it is repeated in Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. That word desire, the desire of women, that word, the desire in Hebrew, kenda, is re applied to the Jesus Christ in his second coming. Because the Bible says in Haggai chapter 2 verse 7 that he will shake the earth. And then the Bible says the desire of the nations will come. It is speaking about the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Septuagint version which was a Greek version of the Old Testament for Hebrews. For the Hellenistic Hebrews who were abroad. They used to read the Torah and the Bible in the Old Testament in the, another version, in Greek. And it was called the Septuagint. The Septuagint says in this verse, And to the gods of his fathers he will not have respect. And to the desire of women he will not have respect. Because in everything he shall be exalted and by him a strong nation shall be subdued. It means that the desire of women is an idol that was desired by women. Amen. In those days when Antiochus came to Jerusalem, some women used to worship Tammuz, the god of the Babylons. Right? And according to history, Tammuz was a small god, the son of Baal, the god of, of the sun. Can you understand it? Amen? So they used to worship the king of heaven, which was Semiramis, and his baby god, which was Tamus, according to Ezekiel chapter 8, amen, verse 14, Bible says that Ezekiel saw that abomination, women weeping for Tamus. In other words, when Antiochus came to Jerusalem, he didn't regard any God. Neither the God of the women, which was Thomas. Same thing will take place with empty Christ. The empty Christ will not regard any God. And we know that the actual adoration of Thomas, 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 is present in the Catholic Church. The king, the queen of heaven is Mary. And Tammuz 
is baby Jesus. Amen? The desire of women. Baby Jesus. It means that when the empty Christ will appear, he will not regard baby Jesus. Neither the empty Christ, the king of uh, the queen of heaven, which is Mary. Catholic adoration, gods, idols. The Bible says in such a way that the empty Christ will be enemy of any kind of religious worship or cult that he himself with the ten kings will destroy the Vatican. Amen? The Vatican is the biggest, how to say, organization in the world. Amen? Who has more, more power, I mean, right? Wow. And you praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women. But in his estate, chapter 11, verse 38, shall he honor the God of forces, a God whom his fathers knew not, shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. History says that Antiochus used to send silver, gold to Greece. Amen? In that worship center of the god Zeus, that was the same Roman god Jupiter, that he brought to Jerusalem. And he set this God in the Holy of Holies. Amen? But in his state shall he honor the God of forces. It means Jupiter. Amen? Praise the name of Jesus. I'm closing this teaching for tonight in this way. Amen? If you want to discern who the Antichrist will be or is is someone who hates the Jewish religion and the God of the Jew of the Israelites someone who hates Christianity someone who hates Amen? You see the point? Catholicism. Are you getting the point? Someone who has his own religion and will magnify himself as the Savior, as God, as God but he will respect and worship a personal religion and worship a personal God. The God that his fathers knew not. You see the point? Amen? Can you praise the name of Jesus? Therefore, we can conclude that the empty, the verse 37 of Daniel 11 does not say that he will be an homosexual. Amen? But it says that is someone who will not regard any God. Neither gods of the Jewish or Israelites, nor the gods of Catholicism, speaking about the desire of women, right? But some, any God, Amen. Any religious system who is against Judaism. Think about. By the time of Antiochus, it was the religion of the Greece. By the time of the empty Christ, a religion who hates publicly the religion of the Israelites. 
You see the point? To establish the only and true God in his own view. Because the only and true God is Jesus Christ. And God of heaven. Amen? Can you praise the name of Jesus? Amen? Praise the Lord. The general application for our lives is that Jesus himself didn't do his own will but exalt and magnified and glorify God and gave us this example to true Christians and true Christians must exalt him and must glorify him in fact Jesus says when he was preaching the word of God and he was interrupted by his fellows who said your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside waiting for you and Jesus watched around and said to the public who is my brother who is my sister and he says whosoever does the will of my father is my brother and my sister it means two brothers in Christ true Christians true children of the Lord do the will of the father and they don't do their own will conclusion is that we should do his own will according to the word of God to magnify to exalt him and to speak wonderful things not against God but in favor of him and about him can you praise the name of Jesus amen can you stand up please glory to his name glory to his name everything is about him he created us he came to this earth to look for us amen in order to purchase us for him and all praises and worship must be for him amen because everything is by him and for him i worship you lord jesus i praise you lord jesus thank you for giving to us this word we receive this word lord help us not to do our own will but to do your perfect will in our lives to magnify you to exalt you lord oh jesus help us in the name of jesus we praise you lord Teach this congregation, teach each one of us that we should glorify you with our words, with our ways, with our thoughts, with our desires, Lord, with our deeds on a daily basis, according to your perfect will, in the name of Jesus. Let from this pulpit, Lord, words that glorify you and exalt you and uh, and magnify you come out lord thank you father let from my heart words come out to glorify you and exalt you in my life in my daily life to help me to glorify you every day lord help us lord in the name of Jesus, we exalt you, we give you glory and honor. Amen.